Finally, after getting set incorrectly the first time, we finally have a replacement set, and I'm really excited to install these. On this episode, we're going to be installing some A-pillar brackets from Bodyguard Bumpers. They're designed to hold a 50-inch light bar and two pillar lights. We're going to go through the entire process here from start to finish, including wiring into our Jeep's auxiliary panel and then testing it out at night, so stick around. Now, aside from the mesh inserts, which we painted orange, these brackets are ready to mount. There is a layer of foam that came with the brackets that will protect the vehicle's paint from rubbing. The brackets mount into existing OEM bolt holes and they will replace your OEM bolts. Ideally, these bolts would have been black. Maybe bodyguard bumpers can make this an option in the future. Is this, it does say two, right? We did have some trouble with the spacers that they provided. Their instructions said to use two spacers on each side, but that didn't leave enough room for the no bolt radical. to actually screw in. We ended up using a single spacer, which made the bracket sit flush. As I edit this video, I'm now wondering if it was actually meant to sit away from the vehicle, but again, those bolts were just too small. After putting the first side on, we realized it would be easier to put the light pillar bracket on first. We're using some lights from Rough Country, the 50 inch Black Series LED, and two 2 inch cube spotlights, also Black Series from Rough Country. We positioned the light bar with the cord at driver's side and ran it across the top of the firewall before actually mounting it. The same went for the two pillar lights. Sorry, just don't want to scratch your truck, man. That's 51 and a half. Another issue we ran yeah, into was right. that the distance between the brackets was about 52 inches and the light bar was just under 50 inches. After a little improvising, we decided to use some of the leftover spacers from the brackets on the ends of the light bar. We made it work, but in the end, it ultimately just isn't a perfect fit. After getting the light bar and pillar lights installed, it was time to wire them up to the Jeep's auxiliary switches. We need to turn these around. As I mentioned previously, we ran all the wiring across the top of the firewall and to the passenger side engine bay. If you opted for the auxiliary switch panel, the wires will be tucked down on the passenger side engine compartment. You'll have four wires. The two larger wires are 40 amp and power aux 1 and 2. The smaller ones are 15 amp and power aux 3 and 4. We're going to put the light bar on aux 1 since it's right at that limit of 15 amps and we're going to put the two pillar lights together on aux 2 as they only draw 4 amps together. This configuration made the most sense as the two top switches on your aux bank will be for the lights. We cut the end of the line off of the cube lights and light bar. In each wire you'll have a black and red wire. The black is the ground wire and attaches to your Jeep's frame. The red is the power wire and this is what gets connected to the aux power wire. After getting everything connected in the best way possible, we took it out for a test drive to test the theory of the light bar making noise or whistling. The rumors are true. It does make a lot of noise, and there is a whistling sound at slower speeds. So we decided to try out the aero lids cover, with the bonus being we could have some cool designs at certain times of the year. It's a very noticeable change with the cover on. It no longer makes any wind noise and no longer whistles. With the installation completed and the noise issues out of the way, it was time to figure out how they performed at night. The lights do cast a fair amount of light, but we weren't exactly in the best location for testing. More on this on the next episode. The cube lights do a great job of filling in the light where it falls off from the light bar.
And of course, the added bonus with Aerolids is being able to run different design inserts. We tested out the orange. After a few weeks of testing both on and off road, overall we're still pretty happy with the results. The lights are bright, and with some adjusting I think they'll serve their purpose just fine. The brackets aren't a totally perfect fit, and we do think that could be made better. But we've updated bodyguard bumpers on the quirks, and they did mention updating their instructions. Hopefully you'll have better luck. If you have any questions, or if there's anything we'd miss, let us know in the comments below, and we'll see you next week.